Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to offer this amendment along with the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Lee, and the gentleman from California, Mr. Stark. The continuing resolution provides approximately $100 billion for De Department of Defense operations in Afghanistan. This amendment states that not more than $10 billion of the funds made available by the bill may be used for military operations in Afghanistan. The intent is clear. It is time to bring U.S. involvement in the war in Afghanistan to an end and to bring our troops home. The war effort in Afghanistan is no longer serving its purpose of enhancing the security of the United States, which should be our goal. We were attacked on 9-11 by Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda had bases in Afghanistan. It made sense to go in and destroy those bases, and we did. We had every right, we have every duty to destroy bases which are being used to plot attacks against the United States. But the CIA tells us that there are now fewer than 100 Al-Qaeda personnel in all of the country of Afghanistan. Congress and the American people helped greatly reduce U.S. involvement in Iraq. Through the elections in 2006 and 2008, we forced a new direction in Iraq and helped bring thousands of troops home. We must now do the same in Afghanistan. The intent of this amendment is to reduce the funding for Afghanistan sufficiently to leave enough funds to provide for the safe and orderly withdrawal of our troops, but not funding for ongoing combat operations. The gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Wolf, earlier today said he would propose an amendment to establish a Blue Ribbon Commission to examine our war effort and to ask the question of how best to fight the war. With all due respect, that is the wrong question. The right question, the first question, is why do we need to fight this war at all? It is past time to admit that our legitimate purpose in Afghanistan to destroy al-Qaeda bases has long since been accomplished. But it is a fool's errand to try to remake a country that nobody since Genghis Khan has managed to conquer. What makes us think? What arrogance gives us the right to assume that we can succeed where the Mughals, the British, the Soviets failed. No government in Afghanistan, no government in Kabul has ever been able to make its writ run in the entire country. Why have we undertaken to invent a government that is not supported by the majority of the people, a government that is corrupt and tried to impose it on this country? Afghanistan is in the middle of what is at this point a 35-year civil war. We have no business intervening in that civil war. We have no ability to win it for one side or the other, and we have no necessity to win it for one side or the other. This whole idea of counterinsurgency, that we are going to persuade the people who are left alive after our firepower is applied to love the government that we like, is absurd. It will take tens of years, hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars, tens of thousands of American lives, if it can be done at all, and we don't need to do it. It's their country. If they, if they want to have a civil war, we can't stop them. We can't choose the rulers that they have. We don't have to like the rulers that they have, and we don't have to like their choices. It's not up to us. At this point, we must recognize that rebuilding Afghanistan is both beyond our ability and beyond our mandate to prevent terrorists from attacking the United States. And if it be said that there are terrorists operating in Afghanistan, that may be. But it is also true of Yemen, Somalia, and many other countries. We do not need to invade and conquer and occupy all those countries. And Afghanistan provides no greater necessity or justification for military operations and occupation. We are debating on this floor hundreds of budget cuts, cuts that will grievously hurt millions of Americans in order to reduce our expenditures by about $60 billion. Yet we are throwing $100 billion a year, $100 billion a year plus countless lives down a drain pipe for no useful purpose at all and with very little discussion of our purposes and of whether our policy matches our purposes. To continue so bad a policy at so high a cost is simply unconscionable. It is unjustifiable to sacrifice more money and more lives this way. And I urge my colleagues to join me and Ms. Lee and Mr. Stark in voting to bring the U.S. involvement in the war in Afghanistan to a close. Vote for this amendment. Let's bring our troops home. Let's stop wasting our lives and our money and our, tri tri and our treasure and our forces. Let's bring our troops home. 
Let's devote our resources to something that helps the people of this country. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time.